I never felt so alone. I just broke down crying. I cut both of my wrists and just hoped I would die. I tell people today, I'm eternally grateful uh, because I didn't die that night. But I remember that God spoke to me then in that still small voice in the mind's ear and said to me, Troy, I love you. And I want to tell you something. You're my son. I don't have stepsons and daughters. It was that kind of a time of everything was in uproar. Life was bigger than life. Gay power! You'd have your name published in the newspaper. People would lose their jobs, their children. People could, would commit suicide. But I heard the comments that were made. Faggot, queer, oh, pervert, child molester. They arrested him that night. This ministry was founded or was sparked from that arrest. We're not going to be oppressed anymore. There's this sort of consciousness that was beginning to emerge and that the light at the end of the tunnel was freedom. Head up, up. I really don't have to take this anymore from anybody. And when you get that going, you have a revolution. Would you welcome Reverend Troy Perry? They were the homophobic kind that would say nothing personal, Sheila, but I think you're all spawn of the devil. I must say first that I'm a homosexual. Here was a very charismatic leader that our community desperately needed. Troy walked the walk and talked the talk. What we do in our bedroom, I should never have to explain to anybody. He knows how to preach. He knows how to talk. And he knows how to, you know, get people's attention. I'm afraid my private parts are my own and what I want to do with them is my business and not the laws. No matter who what the backlash is, whether it's from our community, the straight community, the religious community, he does not deviate from what he believes in. People in this society weren't quite ready for that. People becoming more militant in their actions against the homosexual community in this country. I bring religion up. I bring God up. I bring church of any kind up. My closet burned down a long time ago. I set it on fire, amen. There were an awful lot of gays saying, you're making it bad for the rest of us. I have prayed to my God, asked my God, and I have the assurance some things are going to happen. I said, Reverend Troy Perry, and he said, call me Troy. I said, I know that we are going to do things together. He was this a great big teddy bear, you know, who just wanted to come and talk to you. There was this man who had this radical idea to start a welcoming church, of all things, and an evangelical church at that. When he started MCC, I was proud of it because I felt like that he had really found what he was supposed to be doing. He spoke church and religion and God in a vocabulary that I understood. I don't cease being a sexual person just because I've become a Christian. He's given the gay community a door. You'll find whatever you're looking for in your life through that door. I swear to God, that's what I did. He really believed in what he was saying, and he really believed in freedom for gay people, and he really believed in the rights to be Christian. What's astonishing to me is we're talking about a man whose life and ministry has forever changed the Christian church. The Church of Jesus Christ can never be the same again. In our community, we reach out and we touch each other and we love each other. What does the Bible say? When you have faith, you can move mountains. We ain't moving mountains, but I think Troy, or anybody closest could do it. They may burn us out. They may run us out of town. They might even shoot some of us. But praise God, with God's help, we won't be afraid anymore. <laughs>